Hi my friends, in today's video we are going to talk about pagination. This is going to be last video in this playlist. In the following series we will examine the advanced topics of DRF in detail. Before recording video I added 20 books in order to understand pagination better. We may have thousands of books in a real project and uh, it is quite unreasonable to send thousands of books on a single page. I mean a single request. For example, let's say uh, we, we build a mobile application and uh, we fetch data. If we send thousands of books at a single request, we can lose everything very quickly. Our house, our car, because of the uh, cost of hosting. Joking aside, since our application will be exposed to large amounts of data, it will be very slow and uh, it may have to stop itself. We will find solutions to such problems with pagination, but what is the pagination? I want to return to documentation. As we did while working on permissions, we can also determine a global uh, pagination style that will apply to all our views. However, determining a global pagination style is rarely used. In real projects, different pagination styles are determined for each view. Look, we have a URL here. We are going to create a similar URL and uh, divide it into pages according to number of books. Let's start without wasting time. First of all, I want to copy this to, to set a global pagination style. Let's go to settings. I can determine how many items we want to have on each page. I will change this value from 100 to 2. Okay, I save it. Now I will have 10 pages in total because I had 20 books. Go back to Chrome. Before I refresh, all my books are viewed. But if I refresh, as you can see, we have the different page this time. Here are the links, the next, previous. The, the count shows how many books I have. Here is the another link. If we click on this link, it redirects us to the next page. That's it. We see the rest of books. Look, this time previous is not null. The previous here represents the previous page. If I go to the last page, I click 10. It returns null. I mean next is null. So it means there is no page uh, to be weaved anymore. I think we all understood it is not such a, a difficult subject anyway. Now I want to talk about limit offset. Let's go back to the documentation. I want to copy this and I will paste it again here change it to I refresh and go to Chrome again as you can see not much seems to have changed we still have two books here but I want to draw your attention to next URL the parameters named limit and the offset has been added to URLs let's click it the limit here determines how many data we want to retrieve and the offset determines from which index this data will start. For example, I want three books but index should be after fourth. Let's see what I mean. I want three books so limit is three and uh, I want the index uh, after fourth. I click enter. Three books uh, have been listed and the, the index number uh, starts from five because the, the offset is four. 
however if I determine the limit here uh, as 1 it will only return one item and the, the, the index of a uh, book will be 5 let's try I think we understand why we use limit and offset as I said at the beginning of video, writing a global policy is not a very useful method. Because you know we have several views and uh, we usually prefer a different approach for each view in a real project. Now let's delete the global permission style. We don't need it. And uh, we need to learn how to create our own pagination classes just like we do with permissions. I am going to create a new file. To, to keep the pagination classes inside it let's say pagination.py and then we need to import pagination from REST framework we need a new class whose uh, roles we set so let's create it I will extend this class from page number pagination but before doing that Let's go to source code of it. There are many classes and uh, methods here. If we try to write this pagination from scratch, it, it will take days. Thanks to Django, it handles itself. The page number pagination is here. There are a lot of variables that we can determine, as you can see. Let's inherit uh, our class from page number pagination. I go back to custom pagination. Let's write pagination dot page number pagination. Okay. I go back to pagination again, and uh, you know we have variables here like page size and the page query param and the the other ones. So we can determine the page size in our class. I copy this variable and paste it here. Let's say uh, the page size it's let's say six. I save it and uh, I am going to create one more class. I just copy it. We need to import these pagination classes into weaves file. So let's go back to weaves. We can import it here. Now I need to introduce these pagination classes to my weaves. Just like we did with the permission classes. Go to related view. It's here. I don't write the variables names randomly of course these variables come from generic API view I will leave a link above for those who don't know we need to write the class name that we created a small pagination I save it go back to Chrome I can only view six books here If I use large pagination instead of small pagination, let's try it. Go to Chrome. Now we have just uh, two pages and uh, we see 10 books here. Because we set the page size 10 here and we use large pagination. Another thing I want to show is, for example, we can override the page expression here. You may be making applications in other languages, so you may want to use a different expression instead of page here. Let's see how we can override it. Back to pagination. Go to source code again. Here we have page query parameter variable. So we will change it. I copy it, paste it here. You can write whatever you want. I will write Saifa, which means page in Turkish. I save it. 
go to Chrome again now we can see the expression we have written instead of page finally there is one more thing I would like to mention if we look at the terminal we get a warning here unordered object list warning pagination may yield inconsistent results with an unordered object list the reason for this warning is because we didn't uh, sort our query set we are pulling all our items directly by writing all but in a real project we need to sort our items either by the last added date or by price or etc let's do that I will sort my books I save it here I sort my books by ID from greater to smaller go to, go to Chrome again refresh the page now I see the book whose ID is the greatest if you go back to the terminal I will clear my terminal I refresh the page again we don't have any warning anymore I will end the video here I hope it was uh, helpful thanks for watching see you in the next video